Well, thank you, Dr. Rudd, and what a treat it is to be here with you today at this commencement address opportunity for me. As I looked at the word commencement, I really began to try and figure out exactly what should you do at a commencement address, and so what did I do? I looked the word up. The word commencement is beginning. It is basically an inception. It's also an advent, and it implies a transition from where you are to where you're going. So what a treat for me to get to address you at this commencement address. And days like this for you don't happen very often in your life, right? I mean, this is a big deal kind of a day. But I've got some good news for you. It's even better than you think. It's better than you think. The world that you're getting ready to go into is better than what's in your head. So let's start by bringing the world uh, into perspective. And I'm going to challenge some of your sensibilities about the world around us right now. To me, the world is this fascinating, interesting place that's emerging around us. And would you believe it if I told you that, in fact, it's the safest time ever to be alive on this planet? You know, we have this, we have this need sometimes to look ahead. It, in fact, it's innate in us to look ahead at the dangers and the threats that live in front of us and to categorize them in ways that help us to try and avoid them. That's our survival instinct, no question about it. But consider just a few facts about the world that we live in. Today, in the developed world, uh, our rate of, of survival, the, the number of years that we live out in this life, is almost twice what it was at the beginning of the 20th century. In 1918, there was an influenza outbreak that killed 50 million people worldwide. World War II killed 60 million people. Infant mortality has decreased by 90% since the beginning of that decade. Now, you kind of look at it and you say, well, wait a minute, though. It, it's kind of a tall order for me to convince you that we live in a safer world as we deal with social injustice and terrorism and violence all around us. But the facts of the matter is that the world is becoming more connected and safer in so many ways. I want to talk to you about what I call the Ez effect. We have a tendency to want to romanticize history while we're fearful about the future. My wife Jenny and I had a wonderful opportunity to be on the Côte d'Azur this year, the Blue Coast, the, the French Riviera, and we went to a little town called Ez, E-Z-E. -E. Ez is this romantic little village kind of tucked up on the coast there. It's this beautiful walled city that overlooks the incredible blue ocean of the Mediterranean. And it's, it's so romantic to go there until you realize that the reason that Ez is perched up on the side of a cliff and has these big walls around it was for what? It was to fend off the marauders. The reason that this village existed in this kind of strange setting of being, you know, walled off from the world is so that when the marauders came and tried to kill all of you, you could beat them back. It's an incredible thing now that we just go there and we sort of say, how romantic is this setting when the reality is it was a dangerous time and place to be alive. The connected possibilities of the world that we live in are incredible. In our company, we get so many opportunities to see the connected world. In fact, our purpose at our company, at FedEx, is that we connect people and possibilities around the world. Through that, businesses prosper, communities flourish, and people thrive, and the world becomes a better place. I've stood in countries in Africa and in states in India where you get to see a world that is becoming connected, becoming uh, uh, it, moving into a world that allows the possibilities of a connected world to exist. Remember, in an unconnected world, crops rot in the fields 50 kilometers from the starving village. The ability to connect the world is something that we are experiencing at an unbelievable pace today, and it makes a huge difference for us. 
So the, the point that I would make about that is when in your life you think about the future and you think about the world that you're in, there's often going to be a saying that will come up and it's going to be, is the glass half empty or is the glass half full? I've got a little Italian souvenir I want to share with you here. This is an optimista pessimista glass. Have you ever seen one of these? It's got a little line on it, and above the line it says optimista, and below the line it says pessimista. They use it to serve wine in, in Italy, and they usually fill it up to the line. Well, when I look at the glass, I don't see a glass that's half empty or half full. I see a glass that needs a little bit more wine in it. It needs to be filled up a little bit more. I see potential to fill the glass up. So when you in your life hear, is the glass half empty or half full, what I want you to think about as you transition is what am I going to do to be a glass filler upper. Let's take a look at our own country as we dive in towards, uh, towards where we sit here today. Winston Churchill once said, democracy is the worst form of government in the world, except for all the rest. The U.S. democratic process is kind of messy, right? Especially right now, it's even a bit of a spectacle in front of the world. It even sometimes seems to lack dignity. But the reality is, is this process of democracy that gives us all a voice has turned us into such a marvelous nation. We are so diverse. We are so clever. We come up with so many of the world's innovations. We are so safe. The world around us is actually very secure as we sit here. We are so well off. We are so well educated. And we are so connected. Trust me, I get to travel the world. And it's so often when you stand in places around the world that you really recognize just how fortunate we are, just how blessed we are to have the things that we enjoy in this country. It really is amazing. There has never been a time like this to be alive. So when you think of our country, is the glass half empty or is the glass half full? Wrong question. The question is, what are we going to do to continue to fill it up? Our city, the city of Memphis, Tennessee, Oh boy, I've, I've lived a lot of places. You know, we all hear the Memphis story, right? I can tell you, I have lived a lot of places and I get to travel to many of the great cities in the world and I've never lived anywhere that I loved like I love Memphis, Tennessee. Memphis, Tennessee is a wonderful place to live. A wonderful place to live. The people in Memphis are, and I don't know whether you're going to stay here or move on, but Memphis is now an indelible part of your future, right? You've spent important time here in Memphis, Tennessee. The people in Memphis are friendly and engaging in ways that you simply don't find around the world. Innovation abounds in Memphis. If you look at FedEx alone, you get to see a connected world that we've ushered in in so many important ways. The railroads, the rivers, the highways, the runways that connect Memphis to the rest of the world are an extraordinary part of what makes Memphis a rich place. But it certainly doesn't stop there. Kimmons Wilson and the hospitality role that we've played in ushering in a new era of hospitality around the world, AutoZone, uh, Clarence Sanders and the advent of the modern supermarkets. So many innovations had their wellspring here in Memphis, Tennessee, an unbelievable place. And we have weather and traffic on the fives, right? The weather is terrible in Memphis and the traffic's terrible in Memphis. In the last month and a half, I've been in Mexico City, New York City, and San Francisco. I would love to take you someplace that has real traffic if you think that the traffic in Memphis is bad. This is a 20-minute town, folks. It takes no time to get anywhere. And the weather here is delightful as well. We have long springs and falls. Memphis, Tennessee is an extraordinary place. Is the glass half empty or is the glass half full? The question is, what are we doing to fill the glass up? How about our university, the University of Memphis? What an extraordinary place the University of Memphis is. Go Tigers! I 
had the opportunity to speak at a TED event on the university uh, uh, a couple of months ago, and it was just extraordinary. It sold out months in advance. Uh, people were on the campus that hadn't been on the campus at the Rose Theater in a long time. It lasted all day, and if I heard it once, I heard it 50 times during the day. Wow, what a beautiful campus. What an incredible place this is. Memphians that didn't know just how extraordinarily the setting was at the University of Memphis. Dr. Rudd shared a fact with me a few months ago, which I found compelling. Of the 10 universities that are governed by the, universe, by the Tennessee Board of Regents, which university do you think has the best safety and crime record out of those 10? From UT Martin to UT Chattanooga to University of Tennessee in Knoxville. U of M. U of M is the safest campus in the state. That's not something that you think of, but from a factual standpoint, that's the, that's the reality of the state. But the TEDx event that, it, you know, I, I've had the opportunity to be involved with the FedEx Institute of Technology and with uh, uh, MBA students that are graduating. I'm always blown away by the talent of the faculty, by the extraordinary students that are here, and by so many things about this university. The TED event that I was talking about, there were two kids um, that, that started this thing, a high school kid named Pat Knorr and a kid that had just graduated named Luke Jensen. What, they didn't look at see whether the glass was half empty or half full. They looked to see what they could do. They recognized Memphis needed a TED Talks event, started it on their own, and it became a huge success, which will now become a really important thing for the rest of uh, what we know as TEDx Memphis. Now, what about you? What about you as you're going forward in this world? This is the beginning. This is the inception. This is the advent of the rest of your life. Confucius said, may you live in interesting times. This connected world that we live in gives you opportunities that could have only been dreamed of. In fact, I've had a wonderful opportunity to learn to be fluent in this digitally connected world. My whole career has been based on technology and this incredible wave of technology, which is now 15 billion connections on the internet across the world. But you have a distinct advantage over me. Most of you aren't fluent in technology. You're digital natives. You grew up understanding technology as part of the way that the future would unfold. You are able to dream in a connected world. I never dream about the connected world the way that you can. You can imagine possibilities and futures that, in fact, erase many of the borders and boundaries that separate us. They erase the zip codes that contain us in poverty in our city. They erase the nation-state boundaries that confound us and give us conflicts amongst each other. They erase the language barriers that allow us, to, in, to keep us from having the ability to communicate. They allow you to dream in ways that make a connected world possible, where businesses that you'll enter into prosper, where communities flourish around the world, where people thrive, and where the world becomes a better place. When I look at you, I don't see glasses that are half empty or half full. All I see is potential. All I see is the potential for you to fill it up. God bless you. Thank you.